Well, yes, we've been lucky, Pat. We have indeed. And you can see there's a water buck that's just busy casually feeding. Mm, what are we? I would say maybe 30 meters from where Tingana is. So there's Tingana's little tail over there. <laughs> the two of them are side by side and both seem perfectly content with one another's presence, which is ridiculous in many respects. You wouldn't expect a leopard to be that close or a water buck to get that close. But I suppose I mean, a big male water buck like that is really kind of reserved mostly for big packs of wild dogs or lions. Um, you know, male leopards, while there has been reported cases of them bringing down big male water buckets, few and far between. I mean, there's really kind of no need for it to be, I suppose, too stressed out. And Tingan is not stalking it in any way, he's just sitting grooming. And so that's why you've got the two of them kind of side by side. But Craig, should we just try and position to see? I'm just a bit worried about how soft it is here. I don't want to leave a big rut in front of the cap, but let's just check quickly. Same spot, which is cool. Well, I think it's cool. Not every day that you get that picture right there of the two of them kind of just hanging out. So Tingan has been a real kind of absolute champion today. He's been spoiling us with really kind of cool sightings of not only the fish, but also chilling with the water buck this afternoon. And quite a special kind of way to actually spend time with him. Water buck doesn't seem to care at all and neither does leopard. I wonder if the leopards even notice that the water buck's behind him. It almost looks as though he hasn't figured it out yet that there is this water buck behind him and that he needs to basically turn around and he could potentially get himself a meal. He seems to be a bit oblivious, I'm afraid. Tingy? We really kind of wanted him to do and be perfectly placed for him to drink, hopefully. Come, Tingy. Go to the water. Oh, don't, don't come this side. Really? Now you, you're going to drink in a different spot, aren't you? Of course you are. I think he's quite intrigued by a lot of what is going on at the lodge. It's that time of the day where it's turn down time. So for any of you that have been to one of these camps will know that in the evenings they do what's called a turn down. And turn down essentially Go round, go round, go round, go round, round. There we go, good boy. No, not there. Where are you going to drink from, Tingan? Are you going to drink from the most horrible spot? He almost has made up his mind that there's a certain spot that he wants. Oh, of course, he would go side on. Hold on, Craig. Let's try and get front on quickly. What say you, Craig? Are you happy with that? Is that okay? Apparently we're doing okay. I'm just going to keep quiet for a bit. I want you to try and listen if you can hear his tongue lapping up water. sensitive that they can pick up even these little kind of sounds of him lapping up water right next to us it's very very cool I think it shows you just how clever he is though you know you would think that with Chitra Dam and all the fish that he had there that that's was where he would go drink but actually for him it makes a lot more sense to come and drink out of a little pan like this and so he's come in this direction instead so that he can get safe water without having to worry about crocodiles. So for those of you that were a bit concerned about him and whether or not he would be able to kind of outwit a croc, he seemingly has had some experience and has worked out exactly how to go about it. Now that water buck is so close behind Tingana at the moment while he's drinking, it's ridiculous. He's literally just behind him. Look at that. 
Isn't that cool? Something on is oblivious. The water buck's watching. Maybe the water buck wanted to drink. Here we go. Are you guys going to have a little stare down? Hello. Tingana's not phased. And that's how many animals we got in that shot. We've got basically there's a crocodile somewhere there. There's Tingana, there's a water buck, there's hippos, um, a multitude of different bird species as well. So very, very cool. But unfortunately, we're probably going to have to leave Tingana here. Um, you can see the water buck is just going to follow him and watch him so that she doesn't kind of get a surprise. Um, and we're going to probably lose um, said water buck. To how's that? If there ever was a marketing shot for Chitwa, I think that would be it. You've got the room, you've got a water buck, you've got a leopard. Isn't that cool? There we go. It's Chitwa's marketing kind of shot is the, the room, leopard, and water buck all in front. Um, and that's the reason why a lot of these kind of reserves are so popular, particularly ones that have water in front of them, because the density of game that you get when you have that is is so huge. And Chitra is probably one of the best of them, um, particularly up here in the northern sands. There's very few that have water like this in front of their camps. But the water buck is shouting a little bit, a bit of a nasal snort every now and then that you can hear. Right, let's go catch up with our hyena that is busy feeding on the fish in front. It's a bit of a difficult one for Craig because he wants to try and kind of frame out the, the room as much as possible in case anybody is walking around there and um, the proximity towards the sort of uh, cheetah cut line area and that that female must have a den fairly close by because it was hot it was early afternoon which means she wouldn't have been i don't think walking all afternoon long but i wouldn't be surprised lots of hyenas come tonight because of the smell of this fish it's heavy on the wind there's lots and lots of kind of wind that's kicking up now which is meaning that we're getting quite a bit of scent starting to kind of push through. And there you go, see that is going to trot down to exactly where Tingana got his fish from. And so where Tingana picked up some, and it's watching the crocodile that's to its left before it goes too close. So there's the croc just on the edge there, you see that? Pretty cool that we've got three big apex predators in one little spot at the moment. We've got hyena, crocodile, leopard, and there the hyena is going to start eating the fish as well. So you'll, as what I said earlier, <laughs> <laughs> the hyena shuffle it's doing its dance moves the flies are obviously irritating at no end and so as they're landing on him he's kind of almost hot footing it around the hyena doesn't seem to have taken to this fish quite as well as what Tingana has definitely not nearly as much relish in the way that it's chomping those down as what Tingana did but I think it's probably because it's quite concerned with that crocodile but as long as it can see the croc it won't worry if that crocodile moves you'll find that hyena is going to quickly move as well and try and get out of the way now Tingana has gone deep into Chitwa so I just want to actually try and get hold of one of the guys there we go isn't that ridiculous have we ever put a hyena capturing a fish live on Safari Live I would like to know in the, all the years that we've been operating, it's 11 years now, um, I would be very interested and intrigued if we've ever had a fish carrying hyena live on camera. Kirst, I'm sorry, my earpiece fell out, so I haven't heard much of what you've been saying, I'm afraid. Joey, does anything prey on a crocodile? Most certainly. A lot of things prey on crocodiles early on in um, their lives when they're still little baby crocs. They will get hammered by many things from birds of prey to massive catfish to even other crocodiles, um, lion, leopard. Um, they've all been seen taking crocodiles before. So crocodiles do have a number of prey, uh, prey kind of animals or animals that prey on them, should I say. They're not, yeah. We love prey animals. Um, and so they will get hammered when they're small. In fact, the percentage of crocodiles that survive is very, very small. Um, when they get this size, though, no, not really. Uh, I suppose there have been cases of, you know, lions killing crocodiles and, funny enough, tigers, quite big crocs, and, and obviously the, the king of all of the crocodile or alligator hunting is actually caimans, actually, is jaguars. They're the ones that go after caimans the most um, so you know they really are the kind of ones that really kind of hammer 
um, crocodilian species. But leopards and, and lions are a bit wary of them. Unless they can catch them on land, then they will sometimes go after them. But even that crocodile there is probably a bit big for any of the cats really to risk trying to be caught. Because if that crocodile swings and catches a cat by the paw, it's going to have a big, big problem to get out of there and, and not get itself killed. So generally they just steer clear. And especially in a, in a food-rich environment like what we're in, um, you know, there's so many other options for food that risking going after a crocodile really doesn't make much sense if you are um, a lion or a leopard. There's so many other things that are perfectly edible in the same Well, Isaac, you've survived and these hyenas are busy trying to survive the crocodile. Now look at that. Isn't that amazing to see these two face to face? Now I think the hyenas are well aware that that crocodile is there. The crocodile's not exactly being too discreet about things. But I wonder if it might just launch at the hyenas just in a kind of... Oh, hello. And you can see there's a second hyena that's joined. So the first hyena on the right is the one from the Elephant Plains clan. The one on the left, they haven't ID'd yet. It just kind of ran in. But you look at that display. Now that is a marker to try and say I'm more dominant of the two here. Um, to try and almost indicate to that other one, even though this one is smaller, that the, is far higher ranking and much more kind of um, in charge of what was going on. It's now decided, wait, hang on a second, that this crocodile is too close. It's not going to hang around at the water, but the croc and that hyena are still very, very nearby. I do apologize about the wind. I was keeping quiet because the hippos were incredible. happening yeah it's, I mean, it's amazing what can happen at Chitwood Dam sometimes there's hippos fighting in the background these guys are kind of having a an altercation as well there you go there they are that are busy fighting you can see water is getting very thin and that means that there's lots of kind of booing and eyeing and there's lots of issues that are taking place so between crocodile and hyena hippos fighting Tingana it's difficult to know where to actually look at the moment and there is a serious amount of noise from these hippos too they are really kind of going at it